Now, the task is to calculate and apply soil masks. Remember, sensors operating in the optical domain can only sense the surface. Our algorithms only work on bare or at least almost bare soil. Thus, we calculate masks to discard any pixels that are not bare soil before starting the actual analyses. As you have probably never been in the area and have no information about the situation there, we will use robust narrowband spectral indices to rule out several typical ground cover types, such as water, green and dry vegetation. To do so, start ENSOMAP under Applications, Soil Applications, ENSOMAP 2.0. In the window that pops up, select the tab Masking. Here, select the hyperspectral input file and set the output directory. I choose the folder Results. Now, generate a soil-dominated mask file by selecting all three indices. The Normalized Difference Red-Blue Index, NDRBI for short, identifies water. The Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, NDVI for short, reacts to green photosynthetic vegetation. And the Normalized Cellulose Absorption Index, NCAI for short, is sensitive to dry, non-photosynthetic vegetation cover, NPV for short, such as crop residues. The logical sum of the water plus vegetated pixels is used to create a soil mask, which is called soildomask.dat, and serve to select dry, bare soil pixels. Additionally, two raster files are created for each method showing the index values and the mass created on the threshold set automatically in the corresponding index. Now, load the original image file, as well as all output files in separate map windows and link them. See? Besides the original input image, you just generated a map for each of the three indices, as well as a mask for each of the indices respectively. The index images contain the full range of calculated image values, while the masks are defined on thresholds and indicate, for example, whether the NDVI detected green vegetation or not. The soiled mask file is a combination of all three index masks. If a pixel was not likely to be dominated by water, green vegetation or dry vegetation, it is likely soil. All other non-soil pixels are contained in the mask and can be easily excluded in the subsequent analyses. Have a look at the index values and mask values using the Identify Cursor Location Value button. In the mask files, which value is assigned to the bare soil pixels? Well, yes, right, bare soil is 1, and all other surface materials that are masked are 0. Well done! Now, assess the quality of the masks. Were all pixels containing non-bare soil like green or dry vegetation or water masked out? Are there limitations you observe? Okay, that was a tricky question, as surface cover types change gradually in a landscape it is difficult to work with fixed index values. Therefore, the indices were set to average values that work in different environments and might perform better in some areas than in others. You probably noticed 
that in our scene, for example, a small water pond was not masked. Indeed, the water index used discriminates clear waters and is less performant with shallow waters full of sediments or from the shore. Anyway, I want to go further and will use the selected soil pixels to continue to calculate and visualize the soil maps. To do so, select the tab Mapping in the ENSOMAP 2.0 window. Select the Hyperspectral Input file Set the soil dominant mask and set the output directory. Again, I use my results folder. Now, our goal is to derive clay and iron soil maps. Therefore, I select all algorithms available for these properties. Of course, you can calculate other soil properties too. However, here we do only have ground reference information for clay and iron to validate our results in the end. Simply click on Run to launch the process. Okay, that was basically it, but what happened in the background? Well, Ensomap calculated two clay absorption features and three iron absorption features. Earlier, we explained the parametrization of such features. The clay CRAD performs a continuum removal of the spectrum between 2,120 nanometers and 2,250 nanometers and calculates the absorption depth. The clay content SWIR fine particle index makes use of the same clay absorption features around 2,200 nanometers. For iron, we use different absorption features. We perform a continuum removal absorption depth between 460 nanometers and 620 nanometers, as well as between 760 nanometers and 1,050 nanometers. From the first feature, we also calculate the iron oxide content redness index. Now, load all output files, the overall soil mask, and the image file in separate map windows and link them. Change from grayscale to color ramps by right-clicking on the file name in the Data Views panel and selecting Layer Properties Symbology. Here, you can change the band rendering to single band pseudocolor and select your favorite color ramp. I chose a yellow to reddish color ramp for my clay maps. And a white to reddish ramp for my iron maps. Have a look at the map values in soil and mask pixels using the identify cursor location value button. Okay, let's have a look at the map values. Compare the different soil maps obtained. Why are they different? If you use the Identify Cursor Location Value button, what do the pixel values mean? Is one algorithm working better than the other? Well, for now, the pixel values are only the results calculated by the algorithms without reference values. This means they are relative values and have different units depending on the algorithm chosen. In order to relate the map values to real soil properties values, we need in situ data, which takes us to the next step of this exercise, derive quantitative soil maps and analyze the results. Therefore, select the tab Calibrate in the ENSOMAP window. As input, now select one of the semi-quantitative soil product files derived in the previous task. For now, I use the one ending with clay underscore swirfi dot dat. Next, I set the output directory again in my results folder. Now, there are different options to calibrate a linear regression between the index values and the measured soil property. The gain and offset parameters can be entered directly if known. They can be estimated from image data and reference field data, or 
they can be estimated from a soil spectral library in ENVI format and a parameter file in ASCII format. As I have reference data available, I chose the second option and import a CSV file that was provided for download. For clay, this is Spain underscore clay dot CSV. The clay content data are texture information, and the iron content data are iron oxides, obtained by dithionide extraction method. Both in situ datasets are in percent. The first four columns of this file must indicate sample name, latitude, longitude, and soil property. The geographical coordinate system must match that of the image. In this case, select semicolon as delimiter and start from row 1 to exclude the header. Check the table in the data preview. Click on Estimate to calculate the gain and offset. This will open a scatter plot where you can click on Select and Close. In the EnsoMap window, click Run to create a quantitative map. Visualize the Swerfi map from the previous task and the newly derived Swerfi calibrated quantitative clay map. Use the same color palette as before. After the calibration with reference data, the pixel values now represent absolute values and the units correspond to those in the reference data table, which is percent for both clay and iron. Are there any differences in the spatial mapping after calibration and before calibration? Right. In the last task, the values of the semi-quantitative map were calibrated using reference samples by means of a linear transformation. Hence, maps' appearances are the same, but the values of the semi-quantitative and quantitative maps are totally different. They now correspond to the units of the reference data. Okay, now I repeat the procedure for another soil product and the corresponding reference data. For iron, we need to use the Spain underscore FE dot CSV file. I think you are well prepared to do that part of the exercise by yourself. See you in the next video, where we validate our quantitative maps by extracting predicted soil content values from the calibrated image.